Hi, I'm Stephen Long with GSM Services, and welcome to another edition of Leave the Comfort to Us. I'm here today with Mark Benton, our residential service team leader and resident expert on everything related to your home heating and cooling system. Today, Mark's going to talk to us about GSM's heating precision tune-up. Okay, we're here in the crawl space now getting ready to perform a heating precision tune-up. I'm here with my service advisor, Jason McDaniel, and as I'm telling you what's going on, he's going to be performing a lot of the work and showing some of the actual components that we're going to be working on. Okay, right now we're looking at a 90% gas furnace and we're going to be doing the service for that particular furnace. Um, we're going to go ahead and start by looking visually at the exhaust and the fresh air to be sure we're at the right pitch and level and we'll get that cleaned up and then we're going to move into the furnace itself along with the uh, drain line. Alright, so we're going to come in first and we're going to take that door off. Okay, we're going to set it in a good secured location. Okay, and then we'll take the other door off right here at this point. We're going to leave the power on at this point because what we want to do is check the door switch to be sure that is a safety to be sure the furnace loses power if this door is removed and that's a safety for our homeowner. So I'll leave the power on and I'll push this in and when I do I'll be able to see these lights come on like they're supposed to. Okay, so an example of that is push it in and the power did they cut. So that tells me that that door switch is working properly at this time. So it is safe to go ahead and move into the furnace. One of the first things that we're going to want to check is the inlet gas pressure. The inlet gas pressure is really important to check because the meter that's outside your house, it actually has a regulator on it that regulates the amount of gas that comes in. The way we're going to do this is we're going to shut off the actual main gas pressure right here. While he's doing this, every furnace has a rating and every one of them are different, what they call max inlet pressure. So that's what we're checking to be sure that the regulator outside is still properly giving the right amount of gas to the furnace so it can operate properly. All right. All right. There you go. Yep. All right, the, the meter is zeroed out, and now we're going to return pressure to it. And it is 9.17 inches of water column. If I look at this particular furnace, it is going to tell me that I should have no more than 10.5. So this furnace is fine. It's in good shape. So we'll cut this back off again, and we'll remove the meter from it. While he's doing that, the next thing that we're going to be looking at before we actually fire the furnace up is we're going to be looking at overall cleanliness. We're going to be inspecting the blower wheel in here to be sure that the fins are clean, that we're getting good airflow through the furnace, that way it doesn't overheat and rupture the heat exchanger or cause problems downstream. Uh, we're going to be checking that out. This actually right here is the inducer motor. We're going to be checking it for any oil for the correct function of it. Uh, this components here are pressure switches. What that basically says is that our flue is operating properly and that we've got good, good pressure so that it makes these pressure switches and fires. This is your gas valve. This is what gives gas to make it fire like it's supposed to. Inside of here, which is in an enclosed burner, which we'll show you shortly, is actually what's called the hot service igniter. This is what actually gets hot enough to ignite the fuel as it goes in, in front of it. Behind there is a flame rectification sensor that will also be inspected and checked. And then coming out of the furnace, we've got the wiring. One of the first things that we're going to look at once we get ready to start moving is we're going to check the security of the wires. Be sure we don't have any burnt spots or melted spots on the wire themselves. That way we know you're operating safely and everything's like it should be. Uh, all right, so we've got that taken care of now. So the first thing, like I said, that I always like to check out for me is I like to check all my wiring connections. I like to be sure that I don't have any melted wire, and that's what Jason's going to be doing. We give them a nice little tug to be sure that they're not. Um, we know that metal, as it heats up and cools down, it, get, it retracts and contracts. It expands and contracts. That happens over and over again, and an electrical connection can get loose, even just normal wear and tear. So we're wanting to check all the connections to be sure everything's nice and tight, everything's okay. We're wanting to inspect all the wires to be sure we don't have any burnt 
or scorch places on the wires because that will tell us that the electrical insulation is breaking down on the wire and it may be time to do something with that. So while we're checking that, we do a quick visual on the motor. And what I like to do is I actually like to grab the motor and I like to reach around that motor and be sure I don't come out with any oil to be sure all my seals are working properly on the motor. And I'm also checking here. Okay. One of the things that Jason's going to be checking is the microfarad of a capacitor. When we're using fractional motors now, we have, these motors need help starting. So when you hear the term capacitor, what that is is basically a device that helps the motor start and run properly during, its, during the operation. So this one is actually monitored as a 5 microfarad. And Jason, are you set up? Yep. And We're actually at 3.9. Uh, according to the standard, uh, it should be plus or minus 10% is when we start seeing the, when we start feeling like the capacitor needs to be changed because it's not giving that push to that motor that it needs. So that'll be something that we note on our inspection sheet and that we definitely talk to our homeowner about. Okay. These are your thermostat wires coming from your home. We're checking those to be sure those are done nice and tight. And Jason, have you got your screwdriver handy? And that's one of the things that we tighten these up just to be sure that they are good and tight and that we have good connections from the thermostat. Okay, all right. So now we've kind of went through the electrical. We know everything's tight. We don't see any burnt or scorched spots. This is kind of the, all the pre stuff that we're doing to kind of get it ready to fire. One of the last things that we're gonna do is a pre is the dirt, the dust, the debris that happens during normal running of, an op of a furnace. We're gonna actually remove this door and we're gonna get our vacuum cleaner and we're gonna get all of that cleaned up. We're gonna get all the spider webs out of the burners. We're gonna inspect to be sure there's no uh, you know, bug nest or anything in there that's developed that could stop this furnace from running for our homeowner through the winter. Okay, we're back. Uh, we went through and we cleaned the unit up like I told you we're going to do by vacuuming it, wiping it off, getting all the dust, debris, and everything out. And now it's time to go ahead and check the unit operation itself to be sure that the sequences are following and that it's a safe furnace for the homeowner to have. Uh, one of the things we're going to do before we do that is Jason is going to remove right here because before we check what was coming in the gas valve, now we want to check what's coming out of the gas valve real quick. All right, so what we're gonna do before we fire it, we're gonna go ahead and put the door, that back door back on that we were talking about. And then we're gonna go ahead and return power and the furnace should start its sequence. Now the first thing you're gonna hear is the inducer motor coming on. That's what we talked about. What that's doing is checking the flue to be sure it's got enough pressure to properly fire. These pressure switches are the safeties. That is what's telling the unit that, okay, we've got it. It's also just checked all the temperature limits and all the uh, flame safeties to be sure that if the furnace was to overheat or have an issue, it would shut the furnace off immediately. So by this coming on, we know that this furnace is safe to operate for our homeowner. You'll see the glow right here. That is the hot surface igniter that I told you about. We're gonna watch this. When the gas valve is activated, we will see 3.54 on there. We're going to look at the flame and be sure that the flame is a nice constant cone shape going into that heat exchanger. And Jason's going to monitor that flame because after about 30 to 90 sec 30 to 60 seconds, the blower is going to come on and start blowing air. At that point, we're going to monitor that flame to be sure that we don't see any variation in the flame. That'll tell us that everything's safe for the homeowner as well. And if you look, once it's fired, it's went down to 3.49. So it is in a safe operating range and it is where we want it to be at. Okay, there goes our blower motor. It just came on. So now I know all the sequence of this furnace is operating properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and discontinue that call. Go ahead, Jason. Okay, so that's it for the PTU. I hope this has been informative to you. And if you have any questions, please look us up at GSM since 1927.com or give us a call at 704-864-0344. Thank you and have a great day.